In this video, I'm gonna show you the only risk-free way to launch on Amazon product using Amazon's own data to know if the product is gonna sell or not before you order any inventory. How is that even possible? Let me explain. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Amazon. It always comes down to the same thing. I hear it time and time again. What product do I sell? How do I know if it's gonna sell? How do I know I'm not gonna lose any money? And that is the number one fear for most sellers. So I'm gonna go ahead and settle that fear for you today with this method of actually testing it out. So you know the facts. So I'm gonna show you in my computer real life examples of how I use this, okay? So now you're looking at this product, right? And you know that to judge an Amazon product, you need to have high demand and low competition. So how do most people look for that? Well, they're gonna pull their drop down, right? If you don't have a drop down, basically what this Chrome extension does is it looks and reads all the data on page one of Amazon. So the first thing people are gonna look at is the reviews, right? So this has very low reviews. Under 100 reviews, it's considered very low. If you had someone with 300 reviews, a bunch, you know, a thousand reviews, it's gonna be more competitive, harder for you to break into that market. The next thing you're gonna look at is the monthly sales. How many units are actually moving? So 300 sales is about 10 sales a day. That's pretty good. And then you're gonna of course look at this search volume. Um, and this is search volume and sales is how you're judging demand. Uh, search volume, probably more important for judging demand. Demand meaning how many people are looking for this product. So the question is, how many people are looking for the product and how competitive is the product? If you can answer those two things, you'll know that you will, can make money. If it is a lot of people looking, but not enough people selling, and you can come in and sell uh, and cover that need, you will make money. The problem here is that all of this data is estimated. No software in the world has Amazon's exact data, except for Amazon. So the question is, how can we then answer these questions of demand and competition using Amazon? Okay, and that's what I'm about to show you. But first you need to understand that you need to know your keywords of your market because lockpick set is only one way that people are looking for this product. So this is not the full market. You're not getting the picture of the entire market. You're getting only the picture for this key word. So we're gonna go back to Zombase and we're gonna go to sales optimization and we're gonna go to keywords and I'll show you what it looks like. So if you're gonna go out and try and sell this product, you wanna see the competition and the demand for each keyword, right? You don't wanna just see the competition and demand for this, you wanna see it for each keyword because each keyword presents an opportunity for you. Maybe this is too competitive, 52,000 searches, but if you can do well, if you rank well for 10 of these, you get 50,000 searches. So now you need to go ahead and get all the keywords that are relevant to your product. And relevant meaning when someone is searching the keyword, the, your product is actually what they would be looking for. So the next thing you would do is you would take all these keywords. And let's say when you have that list together, you have a total estimated monthly search volume of 100,000. So now you know your demand is about 100,000 people a month searching for your product. And your competition you've based on you know, what you've seen here in terms of how many sellers are there, what are, there, you know, what are the, the reviews and things like that. But again, that's all guesstimation. Now enter the test listing. Because at this point, we don't really know if these estimated search volume is gonna translate to your product being shown that many times on Amazon. But what if you could actually put your product on Amazon and get it searched see how many people are it'll be shown to, see what it's gonna cost you to run ads on each of these keywords, right? Because when you launch your product, you're gonna be running PPC, pay per click. If you have all these keywords and you don't know, maybe it costs you $3 per keyword uh, for a click, and these are only selling for, you know, $23, $23, $23, it might not be worth it for you to get in there because the keywords are too expensive. So this technique, what you're gonna do, you are going to actually create a listing send products into Amazon, and then list them on Amazon, and then run ads. But the goal of your ads is not to sell the product. Your goal is to purchase information. You just want to know the real Amazon data. So how does this work? You're gonna go and buy a lockpick set or whatever the product is, buy them in the, at a store, a local store. Uh, if it's a unique product, maybe you're gonna go to Etsy, maybe you're gonna go to eBay and get like 10 units. Now again, you don't want these units to sell. If you're only launching 10 and they all sell out, all of a sudden you can't have any more data. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna get 10 and you're gonna overprice the listing. So these are all selling for $23 average. So you would come in, sell your lock pick set for $60, run PPC on that campaign and generate the impressions. And I'm gonna show you actually, 
this is the test listing I'm currently running. I'm three days in and this is exactly what it's gonna look like. So I've been running this test now for four days. So I bought the product, I bought 10 of them. I packaged them in a box here at my house and then I sent that box in directly to Amazon. I created a listing and then I ran these PPC campaigns. I just started this, right? And you can see now I have 9,000 impressions, okay? And I can see my cost per click is average $1.27. But now I'm gonna, I can go through every single keyword here and see what are the impressions, how do they match up with what I got from Zombase, what is the cost per click, is it super competitive? You can see here, they're all under basically $1.87. I think that's the most expensive one, $1.83. So you can see now, I understand the competitive of these keywords. And again, this is not long enough of a test. I've only run it for four days. I'm gonna run this for 14 days. But now what I'm getting is real data from Amazon. These are the real impressions. In four days, I got 9,000 impressions. Now, what am I looking for exactly? First, you wanna see how does the impressions match up to what you saw on Zombies? How does the demand actually match up? And now I wanna make sure you understand that monthly search volume and impressions are not the same statistic. So monthly search means the word has been searched 52,000 times. Impressions are not really showing search. They're showing how many times a product is showing up. So for here, this ad here, 17 piece set, that's one impression. Then if I click in here, you can see sponsored right here, right? That's another impression, right? If I go back, and I see this thing again, that's another impression. So that might be three impressions under one search, but it's gonna give you an overall idea of how much your product is actually in demand, how much it's showing up for relative products. So your impressions is going to be your key indicator for demand. So you wanna make sure that, hey, are there actually impressions? So if I ran this test listing and I assumed 100,000 searches a month, but after two weeks, I only got 10,000 impressions, right? That means that's only 20,000 impressions per month. Uh, that means, of course, the test was bunk. On the other hand, if the cost per click, you know, there's a lot of impressions, but if the cost per click was like $4 or, you know, whatever, $5, and the product is only sells for 30 bucks, that means every single time someone clicks on that product, you know, I spent five bucks, it's probably gonna be really hard, it's really competitive for these keywords. The next thing you're gonna look for is, are there any anomalies? Because you can see a huge anomaly here, right? You see that, the number one keyword has 52,000 searches, but then everyone else drops dramatically. It's not like there's, an, there's another way, another thing people are typing in that is second in search volume. It's like everyone's searching this and then like basically no one else is searching these things. So you wanna see, are there anomalies in your test listing as well? Because what if you get 100,000 impressions, but most of them, or a big majority of them, are coming from one keyword? and then the cost per click of that keyword is super high. And then all the other keywords aren't getting as many impressions and the cost per click is really low. That means to launch a product and be successful with the product, you have to rely on that one keyword. You wanna see, hey, if the cost per click on one keyword is say is $4, can I be profitable? Can I still you know, make money on the other keywords in this market? Another thing that can happen is that you can you know, bid on these keywords and you can see I'm bidding uh, $3 and three cents on this keyword and if nothing's happening, right? No impressions, nothing's happening. That might just be a matter of time, right? Because this is so new, but maybe your keywords aren't indexing. Maybe you can't advertise on some of these keywords. And that was one of the, actually the main reason my very first Amazon product failed. I bought a bunch of inventory, I sent it to Amazon. I'm like, okay, turn on PPC ads. Well, what's going on? I couldn't actually run ads to that product because it was labeled as an adult product. So I couldn't run any adds to that product, so I was basically hooped. If I ran this test listing before that, I would have figured that out and I would not have been destroyed. So you wanna see for all the keywords that you made a list out of here on Zombase, are they all actually valid and able to be run ads on? And then if this actually works out for you and you realize, hey, this is great, then added benefit of this is that we are running exact match keywords. That means I took the keywords that I thought were the best, but if it go, all goes well and you say, hey, the impressions are there, the cost per click isn't too expensive, this looks like a great market I can enter right now, then you can go back and turn on broad uh, and phrase match campaigns. So this means that instead of just targeting, you know, you put in into an exact campaign, lock pick set. If you turn on a broad or a phrase match, it'll rearrange that to, you know, Amazon will go and search for different keywords for you. So Amazon will start targeting lock pick sets, picking lock sets. So they'll arrange your keywords and you'll find out, hey, there's actually keywords that I didn't think of, that I didn't find in my research that are actually doing well, that have a decent amount of impressions that aren't as competitive. And then, then you can take your list 
that you've already figured out, right? Because you've been running this test for two weeks, you can take your entire list of keywords that you already know how they perform. Then once you launch your product, you can run your campaigns, your first launch campaigns with keywords that you already know the results for. You already know the cost per click for. You already know the impressions for, right? So once you launch, you're launching with a foot ahead, a step ahead, uh, because you already have real data from Amazon. And then an added bonus, something that you're not trying to do that I wasn't trying to do because again, I'm not trying to sell these products. So for this actual product, the average price is $30. So most of these products are selling for $30. But I found a market, like I said, that is unique. So people are searching for this product, but what they're looking for exactly isn't being presented. So I'm presenting a new version of this product, right? Totally new. And you can see here, that I actually generated a sale even though I priced my product three times more than the average price, right? I was fully under the understanding that I'm going to lose money on this advertising, right? We are trying to not make sales. We're trying to pay for information, but I'm actually profitable on this campaign because someone bought the product for $97. And that is just an indicator that, hey, I found a great market uh, that has a niche that I am fulfilling that no one else is fulfilling. And yes, people actually want it. They want it so much that they're willing to pay three times more for it. Uh, and this is only four days into that campaign. If I get another sale, I might actually have to raise the price again because again, I don't want these to sell out. I wanna run this campaign for two weeks to get the real data. So again, what's happening here is instead of buying a huge quantity from China, to figure out that your product is shit, you're gonna actually go ahead and buy your product somewhere else, maybe Etsy, maybe eBay, and repackage it, right? Put it inside a box, send that box to Amazon. Now you have products in Amazon listed for fulfillment by Amazon. You're gonna go ahead, create a shipping plan and all that stuff, That's you're doing that when you send your product in, then you're gonna go ahead, make your listing. You know, don't make your listing fancy. You don't want, you don't need nice pictures. Take the pictures on your phone, right? Just make sure they follow Amazon's TOS. Then you're gonna go ahead and make sure your price is expensive because you don't want anyone to buy it, but not so expensive that no one clicks on it. Because if no one clicks on it, you're not gonna get a cost per click, right? So you make it like two to three times more expensive than other people's products see if you're generating clicks. You also wanna make sure that in your listing, you do a, a small amount of bullet points, you do some description and add the keywords that you wanna target, right? So if you wanna target these keywords, make sure that they're in your listing so that your listing is indexing for those keywords. Indexing meaning basically Amazon is reading that these keywords are related to your product because you can't launch a lockpick set and then try to run PPC ads for tennis ball, right? Because they're not, index, they're not, Amazon's not reading that that's related to your listing. And then once you've done that, you've gained two huge benefits. First of all, if you live in the States, it's a lot cheap, really cheap for you to do this because you know, you shipping to an Amazon warehouse is not that expensive. For me, it's a little more expensive because I'm in Canada, but you've accomplished two things, okay? One, you've started really cheap. To 10 units of whatever product you are buying is probably like 50 bucks. Sending it to Amazon is probably 30 bucks, so you're 80 bucks in. And then advertising for two weeks depends what your budget is. Say it's $20 a day, that's $280. So you're in for about, you know, 100, 320 bucks ish. You've launched a, a product on Amazon, you run the test, you got real Amazon data. But the biggest benefit for those of you that are brand new sellers is that now you have that experience, right? You've sent products into Amazon. You've created a real listing. You created a real shipping plan. You created real PPC ads, and you've done this at a super, super small scale. It only costs you literally $300 to do it. And now you know if the product that you selected has a viable potential of generating sales because you know the impressions, the demand, you know the cost per click, the competition, and you know overall if this is worth you pursuing, okay? You know if, all the keywords, you've had opportunity with all the keywords or if you have opportunity only with one keyword, which is riskier. You know if one of the keywords is super, super expensive, if you know all the keywords are super cheap, you know this data and it's real Amazon's data. And now, once you're ready to actually you know, launch a product, you have this PPC campaign to base your PPC launch off of. And then, with all that done, you have the confidence, I hope I did not just end my recording, to go out and actually take action to launch an Amazon product because you tested it, you got the data, and there's no more fear because you did it the risk 
free way. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do I actually go out and find products to start this process? How, you know, you gotta find the products first before you can do the test listing. If you wanna find out how to actually find the products, this is what you need to do right now, quickly. Ready? Click that video right over there. It's gonna show you step-by-step step how to find products that are actually gonna make you money on Amazon so you can start this process and start doing this actual test listing process with products that are already, you know, generally verified that are going to sell well. Click my face to subscribe for more no BS content. My name is JT Franco and I'll see you later.